Hey everybody, hope you're all having a great day today. Uh, mine's been pretty good. Nothing really special to say, except that it's gotten a lot warmer here now. Is um, winter ending? I don't know. If you've been watching the streams, you know that we had an extremely cold January here, so I'm not gonna hold my breath that it's over yet, but we'll see. Um, Alright, so... Open up stream and so we pretty much finished modeling um, this little character. Oh, I haven't loaded it yet. Let's get to that. Pretty much finished modeling this character over the past few streams. And here's uh, some concept art for it and we're going to try and color it today. Um, and if you are here at the stream yesterday, you're you'll know that I'm going to try a technique that's a little different than how most people would go about texturing an object. A lot of times, um, well, for any texture you have to go and do something called um, set up the UVs for a model. And if I bring up another window and bring up the image editor, how this works really is that you would take, like imagine you need to map each of these points to some point on an image so that the game knows where to, uh, or not, well, I guess the other game, but Blender knows where to take every pixel inside of these um, faces out of a texture. And to do that, you would uh, do something, um, just unwrap it. So to do that in Blender, you can press the U key and then do something like a cylinder projection, and so now over here it, it gives you gives you oh, what to do here. I want to move this. So obviously, hmm. I guess usually I would press the I'd use these arrow arrows, but they're not here. Uh, shift right click. Oh no, that takes it off. I just want to drag these down. Okay, well this is um, derailing, but anyway, you would um, move these vertices around um, on the image to get it to show the right position on the actual model, and so you can see around here, This, these are the vertices for around this hole right there, and then there's the feet, and that's the leg, or the tail right there. But, um, in this game, I'm going to use another style that I found by an artist um, named Minions Art. You should go check out her Twitter. It's just twitter.com slash Minions Art, and, uh, she does a cool technique where you actually build the coloring into the model itself. So say if I wanted to make those hexagon shaped spots, I'd actually create a hexagon in here and then we would just drag those UVs into like a blue colored gradient on the texture. And I think, I just want to try it because making uh, UVs and textures is always my least favorite part of modeling and this seems a lot more fun. It's kind of more intuitive as well. Um, so the only thing about this style is that it doesn't do well with patterns because you have to model everything into the actual model and the texture should only have gradients. I guess we could mix and match. I mean, there's nothing that says I have to only use this technique, but I kind of want to stick to it for this. Um, and since that's the case, it might be a little difficult to do the spots on the egg, so uh, I don't know. I guess when we actually make the model, we might even see it doesn't need them. But, um... So first of all, I need to figure out how to translate a group of vertices in the UV view. The so blender, move, group, or move, selection, and the V. Can you see what this says?
If I'm not possibly using seams, your UV layout might be quite disorganized. You need to feed. Arranging the maps. Yeah, so I know how to select, I just want to move them. Which seems really easy to do. Transform, grab. Okay, so I have to press G to translate. That makes sense. I don't really like the song that's going on right now, but it'll be over soon. Okay, so it's just the same. I just forgot. I'm used to the translate arrows being there by default, but you can also press G to open up or to start the translate tool. Okay, so next up we're going to actually make the gradient texture. And looking here, you can see it really only has a few colors. It has the eggshell color and the green color. And then also some whitish color for the teeth and um, nails. And then also maybe a spot color. So, and I'm actually going to make it in Inkscape just because the gradient tool in Inkscape is really easy to use instead of doing it in the GIMP. I'll just make a new image. Okay, and let's set the document properties so we know the extents of the image. And pixels. Doesn't really have to be that big. Let's go... I don't really want any banding. Oh, well, the good thing is that in Inkscape, we can always scale up, so the size doesn't really matter a whole lot. I'll just go uh, 512 by 512. Needs to be a power of two, of course. Well, I guess that's not immediately obvious, but when you're working with textures, um, most graphics cards like to have everything be a power of two and square if possible. So we'll just create a few rectangles. Broke. Broke off, and we want it to have pointed corners. And let's put this in pixels as well. So we have uh, four colors. That 512 divided by four. Oh, don't make me do math right now. This doesn't have to be. For, yeah, okay, that was, I should have known that, but yeah, it's late for me, so. Okay, and then the height is just 512. Probably not worth it to get it exact, but here we are. And we'll just make some more. Um, if I turn on snapping to... Page border. There we go. I've got four gradients. And there's a line right here. I don't think that'll be... That's an artifact that's only viewable in um, Inkscape itself. I doubt it will be um, visible in the actual texture, but if it is, we can just extend one of these to um, outward a bit. So now we want to open up a gradient. And yeah, it's oriented the wrong way, but that's not difficult to change. In fact, I probably should have set this up before I created these so I don't have to do the gradient four times. Alright, so let's... um want it to be straight. Okay, um, actually I should put the lighter color at the top, um, but I guess doesn't really matter at this point. Okay, so then we gotta open up the gradient tool, which is oh, I have that. Great, I did the gradients. Where is um? Who? Okay, 
Um, where's the gradient tool? I know that there is one. Maybe I... If I just change this, it doesn't do anything because uh, I got open up the gradient. Open this back. Um, okay, yeah, that's not what I want. Wait, is it still on gradient mode? Oh, okay. For some reason, this wasn't showing. I guess because I had the gradient selected. So you double click on what is going on. I've done this a million times, so I don't know. It's not Okay, I guess it's changed probably. Okay, I see. Yeah, it's changed a bit since I used it last. Um I used this thing open. Yeah, there was a new version recently. So now you can click on each of these handles and uh that's nice, you can just edit the color in this window. You before it was a separate pop-up. This has... I'm going to bring that opacity all the way up. And um, so right now we'll do... I guess the lizard green. I actually liked the green color that we have here. If I open this up, I can get the fill and stroke. Just copy the code over. And then for the bottom color, use that as a base. But obviously make it darker. I'll shift it, be cooler. I'll shift this a bit more too, just to, since we're working with the gradient now. They're pretty saturated. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. Um, maybe the shadow should be even cooler. All right, yeah, because it's got a like, um, also dip back into the black when we get behind the eggshell. Should try to match those. Okay, so this color, let's do, I guess the eggshell. So the first color would be um, yellow. Pretty warm and then be similar here so something like that and oh that's a bit too too blue I think actually might stay pretty much the same color but just desaturate It's uh, fading a bit too fast, so edit that a little. I'll hold control so it'll stay right up. This color just looks so gross. Um, yeah, I think that's better. It's always hard to do yellow, I've noticed. It's one of the hardest colors to work with. It just, um, shading it never looks right. Right, so if I do add the spots, I'll probably want to be able to change between these colors slightly. Oh, no, that wouldn't work with this. And it has a hard edge anyway, so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to say, because we should put these close to each other so I can, like, grade 8 both ways, but that actually wouldn't work. But this will still be the spot color and light blue. Maybe I'll just pick it up from here. A 
darker color. Darker but also saturated. Usually shadows are a bit more saturated, but our highlight colors are so saturated, I think, um, for contrast. This works, especially for yellow. Bring it almost to the purples. A little bit too far, I think. All right, and now, last but not least, we have the claw color. Actually, is pretty similar to the eggshell, except blue instead of yellow. are so small but it's still it's stay pretty desaturated all right um, well we can come back to this uh, some of these colors uh, I don't know they seem a bit muddy but I want to get started and we can look into it export this. Unity. I'll just put it into the egg dinosaurs folder and let's call this, uh, I don't know, I guess texture. Uh, maybe, well it's in the egg dino folder so it doesn't have to be super descriptive, but why not? PNG is probably not the best file format either. Oh, and I actually accidentally did the selection and not the page. Okay, why did it add more? So I actually want it to be one pixel. Oh yeah, so the DPI was one and a half. Okay, um... So let's go ahead and delete that extra texture that I created and didn't need. Oh, I also have a different window layout for Unity, I don't know if you can tell. But I thought it's probably more useful to be able to see the full column of the inspector. So I messed around with this a bit. Uh, where is it? Oh, I didn't press the export button yet. It's just export as still. Okay, there we go. Now if I open up Unity, I should see it in here. Yeah, so I won't mess with this yet. And now if I um, click open... Oh, I guess Inkscape doesn't export as a JPEG. Well, it's still a pretty small file, but that might be a problem. Um. All right, well, um, all right. Well, I guess that's fine, but maybe that's one reason why I shouldn't use Inkscape for this. But it's just so much easier than a raster image, but oh well. We'll get rid of this 
that so Unity won't complain to me. I guess I should save this actual image. Okay, let's actually um, put this in with the model as well, just to keep everything together. So this will be the um, gradient. Okay, um, so now I need to reopen this dialog. Okay, so now this is set up, but I think um, in the view I don't have it to show textures. Um, so well, where is that? Pivot. Material. Oh, I haven't set up a material. Yeah, so I just want texture. Okay, so now we can kind of see the UVs coming into use. And yeah, the everything that doesn't have a UV set up right now is just plain white. So let's go ahead and just set some um, just default UVs for all this stuff. I have everything selected, and I'll you and just uh, what would be best for this? I guess a cube. Maybe I can set up some seams, but this is all pretty much just going to be in the green anyway. All right, and the nose. I guess another cube. Okay, and the this the UVs are mirrored also, which is nice. We'll probably come back to this. I just don't like it being pure white. And this can be a cylinder. I put that way off in distance. I can actually put that almost exactly where it needs to go right now. Okay, um, so what do I want to do first? How about... I guess we'll start with the egg. Okay, so when I press A, I can see everything. The UV editor. Drag this out a bit, since we're not going to be working in the model view a whole lot right now. So first of all, and there's, um, actually I wonder if this will work. I would like to add some seams here. Because like down here, this needs to start fading backwards into the black. But then the whole rest of the egg, well, Anywhere that is around a hole, it needs to start fading to black, but the whole rest of it is just going to be the normal egg shape. Speaking about that, I do need a gradient. Like, this needs to go way darker. Um, okay, so let's up, and then I'll just create another small gradient below it. That'll basically be... Should I... What should I use as the top? Maybe the bottom color of here. Back up the bone stroke. Then this basically will be pure black. All right. Could have done this without making two separate objects. I'm going to make it a smooth gradient like that. So if you go in the gradient tool, you can add extra edges. And 
And then here, I can just bring that down to black, or almost black. Right, and export. I click on drawing every time. I'm going to replace it. I think Blender will just load the new one. Um, guess not. Alright, so let's try to add some seams. And how that works is we'll click this edge loop. Maybe this one, turn it aside. Uh, did that, that didn't pick the whole loop, did it? Well, I guess I'll just do the rest of it myself. Oh, it's because of the triangles, that always messes up edge loops. So now if we go the UV, not what I want. Um, Creating a new V, so you've got to mark a seam. All right, and now if I select everything and we unwrap one more time. Okay, that didn't work how I thought. I thought it might. Separate out these faces for me, but maybe I just need to pick them myself that I'm trying to do work with seams. Actually, like I don't know why it um did a kind of weird projection there where it wasn't actually good cylinder. Here's seams. There we go. That's fine. Scale this down. Oh, why does it keep on bringing it back up to that spot? Oh, because I have to click to accept. Now I want it to scale this on the x axis to make it all fit into the gradient, and I'll bring it over. And something like this. Now we can see it. Well, it's actually. So it has some dimension, even though there's no lighting. And that's because of the gradient. But actually, this bottom part of the egg, I don't really want it to go down to the black. So let's um, scale this up. Back a little bit. It's on the Y. Not that it matters. And it seems that in Blender, the uh, the ambient lighting is pretty bright, so it's washing stuff out a bit. I wonder if I save this, would Unity pick up the material automatically? Oh, it does. If I switch to the scene view, ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Oh. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Rotate that way. I'm surprised. Usually it will like uh, move around the object you have selected, but it's not. Anyway. It looks pretty washed out here, but it, I mean, it doesn't really have any backdrop. But I guess it is just a plain egg. 
Maybe the colors need some work as well. Should I... The light... That seems fine. Maybe load it up and let's see what it looks like with the terrain underneath it. Yeah, definitely. The egg color is not the best, but uh, we'll we'll come back to it. Let's just get it textured. Okay, so now I need to pick out bases around all the holes. So let's um, hide the child models, and I think I can. I switch to um, okay, what was it? Control Tab, Faces, and I Alt. Right click. I can get these rings. And now I can just do another UV projection. Uh, oh no, that's not what I want actually. I want these back parts to be going downward. Maybe a cube? I might have to do this myself. Oh, you know what? I can look up or straight down on it and then unwrap from project from a view. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. And now I can rotate this around by pressing R. Okay, so now there's kind of a hard edge right there. So I need to bring some of these front ones upwards quite a bit. Um, I lost my selection, didn't I? There we go. So I want to like Alt right click that edge. I bring this up. How does that look? Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, that's much softer. And then yeah, this back face actually, I'm glad I collected that. I need to move this down here. Then just move all this to zero. And put it in very black. Okay. Now let's re-enable everything and... Okay, uh, just so I can test this out, I'm going to rarely just make the nose and feet all in the green. Put that to zero and you're going to have to click first. No, it's just flat. Alright, so let's save this and just look at it in Unity. I want to see how it looks around the face. Looks pretty good, actually, but... Let's rotate it so it has more light on it. I want to do it around the Z, about 180. Oh, what it's focused on. Okay, let's get rid of the orange outline. Yeah, that's pretty good. Think. Cool. 
Um, Alright, so back into Blender. I guess I'll do the other egg holes right now because you can't really tell. Of course, there's not really much lighting in Blender, but that doesn't help. But. Alright, uh, oh yeah, I can switch to edit mode. And I guess I'll select. These are really simple, so. Okay, I'm in edge mode now, so I want to switch back to faces. Alt, right click. I guess I could go ahead and click. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Ctrl Z. Alright, just right click. Oh, just shift, right click. And now, um, actually, no, this. I'll have to wait to do that. Now I'll look top down again and um, you direct from view. I'll move it. Oh, wait, now this is actually the opposite, so we need to look straight on. Yeah, that's better. And if I rotate this just slightly so it's a little bit more. Uh, oh, I actually have to do it the other way around, I think. Not super important because nobody's really going to see down here. But yeah, that looks good. If I click this, scale zero, bring it down, the darkness. Right now I've got to do the same thing to this side, but that wasn't that difficult. And, um, rotate. Okay, yeah, they're upside down right now. This scale zero. Yeah, just move it down here. Looks good. Okay, so now I just have this last hole around the tail, and I'll do the same technique. I'll right click, look straight on. What I want to do. View, project from view. And I guess I'll scale these up slightly just on the y axis. Oh, you know what? I need to do um, other that other ring as well. Let's do one more time. Alt right click. On this one, need to bring this ring back up to the top again. So, G. I guess I'll also scale it. Oops, I only wanted to throw it in the Y direction. And here it's almost completely at the top of the egg, so it'll be very bright. Looks pretty good, I think. Um, and then this bottom face. And we're done there. Oh yeah, I completely forgot I need to reattach the bottom jaw. That would be that difficult to do. All right, so let's um, quick look. I actually want to select one of these. Well, but I like the way that it's colored. I don't know. 
feel like I need to pick like something more vi uh, more vibrant for the egg, or that the gradient's not strong enough. You know, actually, maybe what it needs is like a specular highlight. So maybe I just need to wait until I actually get the shader done. Yeah, I think that might be the issue. But regardless, let's just look in Unity to see how everything is. It does look a little better in Unity. I don't, know, I don't know what the Unity camera is pivoting around, but making it hard to navigate. Okay, I think, yeah, maybe that was the reason I'm used to it being in isometric mode, but... Okay, I do think it looks a lot better in Engine than in Blender, which I guess is to be expected, because in Blender there's not really any lighting. Alright, um... So I guess do the feet next, because they'll be pretty simple. Switch to edit mode. And I guess first I'll move claws. And I can just alt, right click. Oh, what's happened there? Oh yeah, it's not gonna work there because um doesn't like that I that these are triangles and not squares. Maybe an easier way would be to select these vertexes at the end. And I think I can press plus on the numpad or yeah, control plus on the numpad to move up to uh, like extend the selection. That gets most of it. Oh no, it gets all of the Claws, but also gets these in the middle, so I can uh, switch to face mode and then shift right click that to get rid of those. Okay, and let's just do UV protect projection from the top. And these over here. Um, yeah, we need to rotate them around because they should be the point should be the sharpest for sure. Okay. Yeah, well, my mirror we can see them pretty easily. So yeah, this needs to be way darker. I can already tell. Select I think I'll move them up here so that as the tips are very sharp. That looks a little better. Okay, so now the rest of the feet Turn off um, egg, nose, and tail, and I'll just box select on see through mode. Okay, I got yeah, all the feet. Okay, so how do I want to color this? But it'll get lighter as it goes up. Oh, I did get one base. There, that's better. Okay, let's just try a box projection. 
our cube. No, that's not going to work. Alright, let's just uh, protect from the front, maybe. They won't get that right because it's going to be close to the shell. Or, yeah, on the bottom. That's pretty good. Also, the legs should get dark as they go into the shell. So I need to multiply click these and then um, let's project it again. And uh, I should try to match this seam right here to be almost the same color while just kind of scaling it upside down. So let's um, we can select the whole thing, and I just need to move these to be near to that. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just select the whole contiguous thing, and then I need to. Okay. Uh, let's see. I know there is a way I can scale f using this as my pivot point. What is the and for that. Snapping. Proportional editing, that's not what I want. I did uh, see it in one of my I, got, I was researching a bit on how to um, rig models because I don't have a whole lot of experience. And this is what we'll be doing when we're done with texturing. But you've got to... Hold up, pivot. Um... Okay, I got the period key. That's what I was looking for. If I press the period key... Oh, I think it's because I was in scale mode. Or oh, wait. Oh, maybe that's a little out of date. I thought I saw the pivot select in here. Okay, here it is. Pivot center. So that's what I want to do, but I don't think setting it in that will also apply it to the UV editor. Oh, here's a similar thing. Okay, so if I do that, and now, yeah, now it's scaling based on the cursor. Now I can move this down, match. Alright, and now we can see that these colors are pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Let's um, save it. Oh, I think if I saved it right now, it would import into Unity as just a pair of feet. So let's try it again. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Could maybe, like, don't 
This edge could maybe dip a bit into shadow just to have some ambient occlusion in this crease. I don't know if I want to get that detailed, so I'll wait to do that. I guess I'll see how I handle the nose. I'm kind of putting off because that's going to be the most complicated. Let's um, do the tail. And it's already pretty much set it up already. Tail. Is that really all I have to do? I feel like it should be brighter right here, so I'm going to alt. Oh wait, I gotta switch to edit mode. Or switch to edge selection mode. Why does that not show up here? Oh, probably because you have to select faces. Okay, so let's go back. Alt, right click. Yeah, so these top ones. This. I guess I have to deselect everything. You know what? I could just pick the whole thing and then. And yeah, now I've, like, detected them. There we go. Now I press B to B, and I'll move this up. Or actually, I guess I should do the scale tool. I'll do that. And again, set the cursor to be right here. Oh, no, that's not going to work how I wanted. Um, actually, I'll move this up like this and then scale the top down. That way, the tail is um, brighter in general because it is near the top of the animal. Like maybe the top of the feet should be a bit warmer now that I think about it. that, select all of it, and then um, get the vertices here. Just up a bit, just to make it slightly warmer on the top of the feet. I think that looks better. Um, except maybe the, this midline should also be warmer. Let's actually like grab almost our thing. Um, a bit weird going around there. I think it's just because I had to make some extra faces for the um, the claws. But I mean, it's not going to be noticeable because it's a, such a small detail. But I think what I'd have to do is just... I don't really want to deselect it or decouple those faces. Bring it down a little bit. Does that look better? Not really. Oh, because I was looking at the other side because it's mirrored. Can I redo that? Uh... Okay, 
it doesn't matter, I'll just move him back down. Yeah, okay, I can see it darkening, but it's making a weird bit on the side. Like that, and then maybe I can actually just bring these back up. Mess with it and see where the offending vertex is. But they're not like perfect squares there. I think I just made it worse. I'm gonna undo. Well, this looks better, slightly. And if I do the same thing to the inside. Look here because I can see better. Didn't really seem to do much. Oh, because again I didn't I didn't click to confirm it. Alright, so that's good enough. Okay, so now I'm ready to move on to the nose. And it might not be as bad as I fear, but... Yeah, um, I'll wait to do... Oh, maybe before I, should, I do this, I should uh, fix the lower jaw. I'm going to add bones soon, so if I need to remodel any lower jaw, that will be easy to do. Alright, so let's um, collapse this so I can see a bit better what I'm going to do here. You know what? I may be don't need to reattach it because it's going to be really hard to see now. Let's um, turn off the textures. I could almost make the lower jaw just be a separate object now because it's like so far back that I don't think this part of the mouth will ever be viewable. Uh, but then we might have to like model the inside of the mouth when he opens his mouth. Yeah, so I'll leave this. Or, yeah, we'll, we'll reconnect it. Alright, um, edit mode. Uh, vertex. Why is it not selecting? Oh, because I was doing the mirrored side. So I just need to add a few more edges here and kind of curve these to match. Um, so Alt M at first. And um, we'll just uh, control R here. Like that one first. And just merge these together. I'm pressing Alt M to merge. Oh, I'll have multiple selected. Okay, and now let's look at it front view, or actually from the back view. That doesn't make it much easier, does it? Turn off. But, yeah, what I want to do is try to put right there.
Okay, and let's actually move this slightly down. Oh, is this because this... Why is the... I wish that my... Um... Um, translation arrows would come back. Yeah, because I liked, I liked seeing them. I don't know what happened to it. Let's press a button to hide them at some point. Let's see. Uh, Blender, display, translation, arrows. Little hand icon. Yeah, hand icon. As you can able to disable it with the hand eye contact if it's disabled. For some reason, I had 3D cursor instead of bounty box. Oh, I didn't think that the UV selection would. Okay, I guess it did. I guess those carry over. Good to know. Um, this should actually go slightly inward. Oh. Yeah, right here is also another hole. Oh, what's going on right there? Oh yeah, that's the top of the lower jaw. Oh right, yeah, the top of the lower jaw needs to connect to the bottom of the upper jaw. Obviously. Why'd that turn black? I can't see it. So do I need to add another edge loop? I think I do. Um, bit of a shame because I don't have one on the front of the nose, but maybe that's okay because I can round out the front of the nose a bit more. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Our So I'll just select. Oh, we'll just match up with the top and alt. I need to make sure that the bottom jaw is not clipping into the top. Doesn't look like it is. Okay. Very close though. I'm surprised I was able to move it so close. So alt M at first. Nope, wrong one first. And then I just got to do this corner. And now I think everything should be connected. So adjust lines a bit. Actually, the bottom is what probably needs adjusting because this vertices are really far over. Oh, it's because I wanted to round out the bottom a bit more. Yeah, we can... Leave that. I connect in a weird way, but... Happens here. Oh, yeah, there's like a lip, isn't there? Oh wait, how do these connect up? Oh, 
Okay. Um, yeah, maybe... Oh, I see. So there's not actually a lip. I might have to change that in the future. It's just like a triangle right there. But uh, that's fine for now. It'll be easier to fix when we get bones because then I can uh, move this downward. So then I'll have to, well, since I'm about to texture it, I might as well do it now. Let's see. How will I select just the lower jaw easily? What was it? Control plus? Yeah. I think that did select all of it. So if I move this down. Okay, this did show some weird things like. Josh shouldn't. Like, this triangle shouldn't exist. Okay, so how would I fix that? Um, yeah, the inside of the jaw in general is kind of lazily done. I must have... I need to like add another loop here. Or actually... Oh, let's move this down even farther so I can see better. Um, Uh, let's see. Look up from the... Okay, yeah, that was the top. Maybe if I... Okay, yeah, that's what I need to do. Just get underneath the rest of the mouth. First, I'll fix this part, and I think I just need to select vertices here and just bring them up. Um, so... Why? Oh wait, actually, yeah, Z. I can't really see what I'm doing, but. Okay, so now he has more of a, a lip instead of just a weird little beak. I'll just clean up this line a bit. Inward. Hi. Actually, this should probably be deeper in general. I mean, he is a dinosaur. better I think. And they don't all have to be in the same plane either. I guess he did have a tongue but I probably won't model that. I'm uh, envisioning having an animation where he bites something, but tongue might be a bit overkill. So now I need to fix where it connects with the rest of the jaw, and first up, yeah, this shouldn't move all the way down, obviously. So how do I do that? I guess I should just delete those faces, and um, 
rebuild. Okay, so I'll just select edges and let's create a face there. Yeah, this face is really weird in general. Um, this one. But not another edge loop. I could actually build one. I don't know. I didn't extend this edge loop for some reason. Knife tool gonna play nice with me tonight. I don't know what the deal is with the knife tool. Okay, so maybe I could just create an edge loop. And I finally need to merge these two vertices. Have the select vertices and Alt M at enter. Okay, so now this should clean up pretty simply. I guess I can select these two. So the top of the mouth is really boring. Um, do I want? Oh, that's because it's actually visible when he closes his mouth, so I don't want to edit it too much. I guess this part should like move in a little bit, um, but I'll just leave it. Never gonna really be seen. Okay, I think um, that's good. So if I Turn back on see through and just select all these vertices. Back up. Gonna make sure that they don't flip into the top. Okay, I think that's good. Now we're ready to get back to texturing. We'll turn that on. Oh, so I guess, uh, how do I want to start this? But maybe, um, Let's move this down still. And then I'll just do maybe a okay, I think the best way to start will be a projection from the top. Okay, and I think it will mirror my um, UVs, so that's fine. I need to rotate this around, but it's still around the Cursor, but that's fine, it worked out. Okay, and towards the back, all these need to be really dark. I'm trying to press B. Move. Something like that. I guess the inside of the mouse should actually have a red texture. I don't have a red for that. Okay, um, I think what I'll do, since I haven't used this egg color yet, I'll just add a red up here. Exactly half the two six. Oh, but it's in millimeters. I wish it would stay in pixel. Uh, 
All right. Um, so this get a reddish color. Get slightly cool. The bottom. We also red and even cooler, but very dark. Looks good. Let's just export this. And I think I'm going to need to reopen it. Okay, so let's see. Need to move out these faces as well as all these inside. This is a little awkward because the lip. Oh no, I guess this is still outside right here. And it won't be super noticeable, so. Control tab, select faces. Those and what did that just select? I'm not sure where to stop on the top. I need to model something here. If I look oh, one bottom actually. Okay, so you actually it almost meets off of it up there. I think this will be fine. It's just there's a bit right here along the the teeth. I guess technically it should be red all around the teeth, but um, I need to make this part red. Maybe add a triangle there. Let's um, and I want to um, check from the top. It's already like that, so I can just move, actually. Oh no, I need I do need to protect again to decouple them from the rest of it. And I need to rotate them around again. Oops, it's on 3D cursor mode. Control it should snap so I can move this perfectly 180 degrees. And I'll just move this here, and I guess I'll bring the cursor back. And it's a lot easier to um, scale from the cursor, I think. Okay, that's pretty good, except um, these vertices here need to be darker. Is that these? Yeah. Also, the bottom ones need to be darker. I think um what I want to do with these two I move that down oh wait no that's not what I want to do I wanted to these three I don't think I can select it that 
or select them from within. Oh, I can select these two faces though. That. Then I just want to move these three down slightly. Does make a hard edge though. Yeah, so it's not gonna work. Okay, um I'm missing the middle one. That this one? That doesn't seem to make any difference at all. Oh, right, that's the top. Okay. Um, that's the other side. Oh, here it is. So that's better. This makes the bottom darker. See a little bit going on here. Um, I think that is this. No, it's one of these down here. Yeah, that's it. So I want to bring this up a little bit just so it's not quite the dark on the edge, although that makes some weirdness up. I think that looks as good as I can get it. Um, here. That one, I think. I wish I could select it in the model view, but I don't know if you can. Oh, so that's the reason, because it was way a lot farther down than the rest of them. So the top would actually be a lot darker. This is a front up here, and this is that line right there. So I guess that probably should go down a bit. I keep pressing the wrong button. But I'm moving the vertices I don't mean to. That looks a little better. Okay, I don't like the way that this is colored actually. Um, not sure how to do this top jaw. I think it should be green around these teeth, even though it's not realistic. But I think I'll come back to it. Let's do the rest of the face. So... Need to darken the lower jaw. Select that one. I accidentally got the uh, piece. Um, Alright, so it's these up here. But I think I should just bring them down.
specifically... I don't want to have a hard edge, so I can't do it like that. They're all squished. If I zoom in, I can select just this row. That's the bottom. Oh, I see. It's like they're overlapping a little bit. That's better. There's some weird stuff going on. Let's face now. I think it's right here. Wait, that's the inside. Well, I mean, that's probably okay. It does look a little weird, but... Okay, so let's move on to the top. And I need to do kind of the same thing. The hard thing about the nose is that it it's not like darkens in one direction, because it has to be light on the top and on the front. I think it's dark on the bottom and the back. So it's a little more complicated than the other ones. Let's um, get all these faces. I mentioned I still need to do the. I need to do the. Um, nostrils. I'll just leave that now. Okay. Oh, looked at those. And a couple here, which I don't want. Actually, I think these, I will want these to be green. Um, it might be a good time to fix it. Something like that, that might be good enough. And while I'm here, I might as well and I'll just uh, project again from that'll be the easiest way. I guess the top. to do over here and rotate oh, don't want to do it around the cursor now I want to do it around the cursor though Okay, so now, kind of back to where I was before, but, but, um, and there is a little seam here, but I don't mind that much because it's going to be like inside the, um, the head and it kind of makes sense that there's a seam there. So I want this bottom part to be a little darker. Okay. 
I don't know how to do both, except just individually like I did here. But that's difficult, because I've got to find all these points. Maybe it would be... Yeah, because from the front, there's no way I can just select based on um, the depth. So maybe I should actually project them from the side. Try this one more time. From view. And let's turn off that again. I think this will work better. And now if I turn back on the cursor and scale this down on the Y direction. So that looks good. And now I can select individual loops here. So I'll right click. This point. Oh, that one. Super duper green chase. Okay, and so now I could just select these and bring them all down. These are the bottom, so I want it all to be darker. And again, there will be a, a bit weirdness right there, but I think um, it's going to be how it will look. Let's select it all again, and I think I'll bring next row down a little bit too. Like that. Yeah, I think that looks good. Maybe all this... I kind of want to um, scale everything a little brighter. Except for this. Okay, so back to the cursor. Scale, Y. So everything's a bit brighter. The face should be the brightest part of the monster. In fact, we might make all this brighter except what's in the, the depths of the eggshell. Like this one is missing. So right here. Like I'm gonna cause more trouble. Up. That'd be okay. Well, now I can see. I want to move. Oh, that's already kind of bright.
sure. This is so weird, like, banding right there, but I don't know why. That looks better, except now this part's too bright because I made a seam. Okay, so undo all that. I'll come back to it now because I'm starting to run out of time and I want to finish the rest. Oh, what's going on here? Um, and it's just because these vertices don't get dark as dark as the other ones. Does it have them selected? So if I bring it down... Yeah, that's moving more than I want. I ought to be able to select... Select... Um... UV from model view blender. Oh, well, the problem is you can only select it from. You can only select face because that's the only way you can get the UVs. So is this bottom? down but I can't just like select them and drag it because then I'll create a seam. It's just these. That did the trick. Okay yeah there that was what I need to do. Okay so now I'll select the this ring and then and they're already in a good projection. If I uh, select just the top ones, which I think are here, and up brightness, then we'll have a good. Gradient into the nostrils. Yeah, that's fine. No, I'll just select. Oh, yeah, I can't do that. But get each of these separately. And okay, it's not projected very well, so I'll project it from the front, select them all, and bring it over here. And I've got to get it to um, individual, or wait, medium point, and rotate it around because the sharp point should be the brightest. Now I'll just select this and bring this down to exaggerate the point a bit. Actually, I think I made the part go up. Yeah. Okay, I think that we might be done. I mean, there's still a little bit of work that could be done here. But I mean, I'm not like completely shading it. It's just a gradient. It's just supposed to give the bit of um, 
ambient occlusion, which is like where two edges or two faces are close to each other, a shadow is naturally created. So I kind of I gotta keep that in mind instead of trying to make everything shaded perfectly, but. Um, So I guess I should bring, yeah, let's bring the um, lower jaw back up into its correct position. Wait, so... yeah, there was last, the one I want last. Wait, is this? Yeah, it's perspective still. How do I, I want to turn it zero. No. Yeah, that's what I want. Five. I want it to be orthographic. Okay, I need to change to vertex mode. So, control tab, vertex, and B to also select. Oh, and I've got to turn on see through so I can select vertices out of behind me. Let's move this up and. Try to do it as close to the top jaw as possible without clipping into it. Okay, uh, it's a little weird that you can see some red. So I might go change that. I need to add another loop, I think. But let's um, look at the model. Pretty much complete. All right. Um, that's looking pretty good, actually. Still a bit plain. I want to add cracks to the eggshell, and then maybe some spots. I can't. I keep going back and forth on if I want to do the spots or not, because I do like it kind of simple, but it might be a little too simple. I don't know. Also from here, well, I guess I could just have a long nose and the head's like here. I was going to say the nose might be a little bit too far outward. And I could have pulled it out to edit the model. I can't remember. Again, it's three. Okay, um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So, um, again, well, I need to add cracks and do rigging. And I want to, uh, actually, I don't know, I maybe should fix that. I mean, he has a really bad overbite, but I'm not sure. I mean, it probably should be green. So uh, maybe fix red showing um, top jaw and then egg cracks and egg spots. Besides that, I'm pretty happy with it. We will need to see it animated to see if I need to fix anything else. Oh, I do want to change some of these colors still. But that's not difficult to do. Actually, already imported into the game. That's really easy. But yeah, we also need to do shader. We should have um, one thing I want to do, and maybe I should do that before I mess with the colors, is um, I want to have a cell shader, probably. That tends to look better with low poly. 
models because so because you can't see every single um, face. Wait, so it's um, so that should be before we do the colors, we'll do the shader. That will affect how it looks, obviously. Looking around at it, I think it looks... Yeah, I like it. Let's actually see it in the game view with some terrain. Okay, what's going on? Oh, the, the capsule spawned underneath it, I was going to say. <laughs> What is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, obviously, the terrain texture is not finalized either, but... I was actually thinking about that earlier. One thing I might want to do is when we do these heights, like instead of using a color map, I might go back to something more, um, I don't know, I guess procedurally generated, and um, it's just the deeper sections in the terrain will be darker color. Well, I guess we could still do that, because we don't... Oh, we do use the color, actually, for um, picking the texture. But I mean, we could use one of the other UVs for that. I'll have to think about that. But I think it'd be nicer if I made like these divots in here be darker. Because then it would match kind of what I'm doing with the gradients for the character colors. And I think most of... The textures for each block will be just flat colors anyway, because that's how it is for characters. But I like him, but yeah, he does need a little something. Maybe when I add the cracks, that will be good enough. But I did want to start with something simple, so I'm not too worried about it. Alright, well, it's been about two hours, so I think I'll wrap up, because yeah, we don't have time to do anything else. Um, so thanks everybody for coming by and uh, watching. I think we got some good progress, so I'm happy with that. And um, tomorrow, I guess, we'll finish up texturing and write the shader for sure, and maybe we'll have a little bit of time to get into rigging. I don't think it'll actually take that long because he doesn't need a whole lot of bones. He just needs one for the base and then one for the head, the lower jaw, both feet, maybe an ankle joint, and then, well, there'll be a bunch in the tail, but those will be pretty simple. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if you missed any of this stream or previous one and you'd like to catch up, I will upload them all to my YouTube channel. Also, if you want to know when or be notified when I go live tomorrow, which should be around 8.30 East, Eastern, um, feel free to follow me here on Twitch and also um, my Twitter. I'll post there. And uh, finally, I have a Discord channel if you'd like to chat with me throughout the day. I'd love to have you. You can get links to any of those by typing exclamation point YouTube, Twitter, or Discord into chat or checking out my channel description or video description. And that's all for me for tonight. And I hope you all have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.